now Take a step outside and seize the day now Set aside your worries, it's okay now The sun is here to stay Blue skies Feel the wind beneath you as you fly Hey guys, this is Kimmy with Blessed to Press Creations and today my mom is going to be showing you how she sublimates on a puzzle and makes a custom puzzle. So make sure you stay tuned for that and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this and Tell us in the comments down below what you liked, what you didn't like, any questions you had, and we will be sure to answer them. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. Okay, we are back with the second part of the video, which um, I'm going to show you the template. I'm going to show you how I set up to do the um, sublimation printing for the puzzle. Right now, my paper is set to Super B because this is my third or fourth time attempting this video. I already printed out. Um, two puzzles that I was going to do on the Super B size paper. The video got corrupted, but then at the same time, the printing of the paper was much larger. The images were larger with so much bleed that too much of the picture um, was outside of the parameter of the printer. So I'm going to change this back to the size to do one puzzle at a time. This will be great um, using Super B if you had to print multiple pictures, multiple puzzles, because you can set up to do two puzzles at one time, cut the paper in half, and then press them independently. I have a um, 16 by 24 inch um, heat press machine, so I would definitely be able to print these two puzzles side by side at once. But because I want to make sure I'm uh, getting the most bang for my buck, I'm going to go ahead and just do one puzzle at a time. So just for those who may not know, I, I do not know Silhouette Studio hands down, backwards and forward. I only know what I need to do for what I'm, I mean, you know, I only know how to use Silhouette Studio for what I'm trying to do at the particular moment. So right now, the only thing that I know is what I'm going to show you on this video as it relates to um, setting up to do a puzzle. This can apply to a different process. It doesn't have to be for a puzzle, but this is the steps I take when I'm going to come in to print something for silhouettes, for silhouettes too, for sub, from sublimation. Um, okay, so the settings are machine to none, cutting mat on none, media size custom. You're going to adjust the width and the height according to the size paper that you're going to use. You're going to put the orientation according to the size, to, uh, according to the direction of your print. Okay, and that's what you need to do on this very first page. I have a gray um, cutting mat or I have a gray mat in front of me because the project that I worked on yesterday, I needed to um, be able to see the cut, the lines on the template. And I couldn't see that with the grid on it. But if you wanted to see the grid, all you have to do is click on the, the screen, click on the grid option, click, make sure that you have show grid checked and then um, squares have this square highlighted down here on spacing the reason that you don't see a grid on my um, uh, canvas on my um, mat is because I have it turned all the way down but if I move the dial on spacing as you see the grid appears and then you just move it up according to how big you want each square right now they're set at 2.5 but you can adjust it to as big as almost four inches each all the way down to a quarter of an inch or twelfth of an inch and if you go all the way to the end it'll give you to where your grid can be a solid color and then down at the bottom down here you put um, the color that you want all right if you needed to have spacing um, broken into a particular number fours five six seven eight whatever you need you divide the boxes up with the grids up this way by moving the box for division, okay? I had mine on four, so that when I'm using the grid, that's what I have. And I, it, when I do have the grid on, I usually use that one inch like that, and it, it works out good so that each square is one inch, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back to a grain, because I don't need that, and I'm gonna bring it back down to solid color, because that, that's perfectly fine for me. So um, 
I want to use A3 paper. I'm going to go over here just to just to see the size of the A3 paper to be sure. 11.7. No, I don't want A3. I want A4. That's the size I was talking about. That's the size I have next to me right now, which I did the first puzzle on. So I'm going to set my printer to A4, and that is 8.2 by 11.7. Um, because I need bleed on the picture, I'm going to make the picture a little bit bigger than that. Um, because I, I have my template from the, the puzzle right on the paper right now. And I will have just a little bit of bleed. It worked out perfectly um, for me when I did it the first time. So I, I, don't, I, I don't question that it'll fit on there. It'll be just a little bit of bleed, but it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to come back to my page set up here and click on it again so that I can customize the uh, the size of the paper. The photo that I'm going to print is going to be in, um, I wanted to say horizon. This is portrait and this is a uh, horizontal landscape horizon. I'm going to click on landscape because the photo that I'm going to bring in will be in landscape form. I'm going to make my width. That's going to be, let's make that, it's, it's just the mat, so I'm going to make that, um, what size was that? I'm going to say 12, and then I'm going to make the height 8.5, okay, so that should be good. Let me just double check the numbers on that. Again, 8.2 by 11.75. Okay, so 12 by 8.5 will be great. So having the mat that way, now I'm going to go to my files and grab the picture that I want to bring in and drag it right over to Silhouette Studio down at the in my taskbar and then bring it up here and it will bring the picture in. Now, this picture you're seeing. I, I, I want to say is that size because I've been working with it, doing different things with this particular picture, but I'm going to make it the size that I need for um, this particular project. So I said my width was going to be 12 and my height was 8.25, 8.5, Okay. And then that will make the picture be the exact size of my um, of my uh, canvas on my mat and then when I go um, over to the printer to print that I will be able to have some bleed it's going to print with a border because I'm not telling it to print borderless but it will be all right enough that it'll give me some um, room to uh, have a bleed on the on the photo because I did a pu puzzle already so I know that it works all right so that's my picture that's my image that's how I bring it in to cut to print with silhouette since I'm not using silhouette to cut I don't need to do anything else to it but what I do now you get this little triangle over here that tells me the low resolution this is on my print low resolution causing graininess I've already done it it's not going to do that it's going to print beautiful because um, I've already um, worked with this picture in here so I don't I didn't pay that no mind so I now I'm not telling you not to take it into consideration but I know that the size of the picture is large enough because I've um, double checked it and checked it out but um, I'm gonna go here to, to file and I'm gonna go to print um, I have my workforce 7710 which is what I have for um, sublimation now I already have it set up because like I told you, I already did this video a couple of times, but we've just been having issues with the um, corruption of the file. So I'm going to just go through the steps once more again for uh, learning purposes for anybody that may be work watching who has not, who have not done it. I'm going to click on preferences and in here, I'm going to make sure that my settings are what I need them to be for um, my, my picture to print. Now, because on the other print setup page, I selected A4. It translates right over here to that, that I want to use the paper cassette, which is all you get the option to do on the um, Epson 7710. Um, document size, I'm using this A4 size, which is there. It's in landscape 
I'm using premium presentation paper mat. I am using high quality. Um, and then we don't have anything to do with two side printing. You don't want that. And I'm using print preview. I always use print preview because I want to see it before it goes to the printer. So that way, if I need to modify or change anything, I can do that. Um, then I'm going to go to more options. And on this page, I'm going to make sure that my color correction is set to custom. And then I'm going to click on the advanced setting and make sure that I'm on ICM. I don't want to be on color controls and I don't want to be on fixed photo. So I want ICM and I'm going to click OK. And then down at the bottom, I want to make sure I'm off of high speed. I don't print in high speed. I'll let it go nice and slow so that it can lay down the ink and the paper can absorb the ink at a good rate. And then I want to make sure that I'm always mirroring in the image whenever you're doing sublimation. Okay. So you want to make sure that your custom setting is set to ICM and that you're mirroring the image. And it's your choice whether you want to print on high speed or not. But I watched videos that talked about sometimes Printing with high speed causes the ink to be laid down too fast and the paper doesn't absorb it quick enough. And then you'll get some kind of satur oversaturation and um, uh, bleed through on the uh, rollers. Okay, so that's all you need. And then you can go back to the main page. Everything that you set up over here will be set up. On another video, or you can go and watch Angelo Bonaparte and... Um, Silhouette, I'll put the name of the young lady's video who teaches you how to get all these presets and everything set up. Um, somebody that can teach it better than I, I'd rather just direct you over to the video, but I'll try to make sure I put all that information down below. And then I'm going to just click OK. And um, from right here, other than the fact that I need to go and change my paper out, out of the printer right here, I would set print, I would click print. But if I do that right now, my printer is going to beep and tell me that the paper doesn't match because I just printed to, to um, Super B paper. So I'm gonna pause right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the image printed out and then we'll meet back in our printing area where we're going to go and um, sublimate the puzzle using this photo. I already got my heat press machine set up and turned on warming up, getting hot. And so the only thing I have to do now is wait for this to print out and then we'll pick up the video on the camera and go back there and do the um, actual sublimating of this print of this photo okay all right so that's it for this section hi guys this is Kimmy and Janita with blessed to press creations and this is the, the third part <laughs> of this um, video showing you guys how my mom is going to sublimate on this um, the puzzle sheet that we spoke about in the beginning of the video so you're going to see that on the new clamshell heat press that my mom just got from photo ink ephoto ink so we're going to be testing this baby out and giving you guys a full review um after a few uses of it so take it away mom okay so i finally after so many attempts to record got this video got this um image printed I mean we've been just I printed on the wrong side at one point in time <laughs> <laughs> but I am just determined to get it right so anyway I printed the paper out here is the puzzle I'm just gonna put the puzzle down mm -hmm. and we have to preheat it um, perhaps to get the moisture out of that as well like you do with everything else I have double I doubled my um paper here because I mistakenly printed on both sides so I definitely don't want to get any ink on my um, heat press so I just doubled up my paper um, and it's even with it being double it's still bigger than the size of the um, puzzle so we're just gonna um, preheat that for 20 seconds or 10 seconds actually it's supposed to be and then I will um, move over to the other side of the room and just line it up and put the tape down on it okay having done that um, I do want to adjust my pressure a little bit because it seems a little loose for something that we were doing yesterday. Okay, that's pretty warm. And I'll be right back. Okay, mm -hmm. you just got to remember that you have the... This is printed on this side because I printed on the wrong side the first time. But the image is also printed on the other side. So you want to make sure that you have the paper on top the sublimation paper needs to be on top. I'm just turning my paper over here. And when you press this down, so it's going to be 
400 degrees for 60 seconds, I want to say. So I'm going to put that down there on there. You see the image on there only because I missed and printed on the wrong side at one point. Now, Mom, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So you see the, I see the tape there that you taped it down with. Now the tape is yellow. Is that going to transfer onto the puzzle? No, because this is heat resistant tape. Okay. And this part should not sublimate only because it's on the wrong side of the paper. Mm -hmm. But I doubled it up and folded it just in case. Okay. So that if it does, it's going to definitely get onto the parchment paper. Mm -hmm. And the other side should just trans transfer into the, um, p fold the puzzle. Okay? Okay. So I just turned my knob to make it a little bit tighter. We're going down. We got it locked. And we're going to let it go for 60 seconds. You will um, see smoke coming out from under that. But that's just the gases doing their thing. Trans transferring into the uh, uh, substrate. And then when you um, release it, you want to try to release it gently. I have a heat uh, heat safe glove here because the top of the I have a heat safe glove here because the top of the heat press gets really really hot. Um, and when I bought this, I got it on Amazon. I didn't realize that it came one glove, even though it clearly <laughs> said it glove. I bought it thinking I was going to get two gloves. It was only four ninety five or something like that, I believe. So I have in my cart on Amazon. Um, a couple of more so when Kimmy is doing sublimation as well reason I am feeling better about using a glove under here is because this bad boy is hot and when you're sticking your hands up underneath there you don't want to be taking a chance on getting burned okay so we're almost done with the process and I'm going to hold down the top because you don't want it to pop open so I'm going to release it and then we'll let it up hopefully that jolt don't cause it to uh, do anything and you see that only sublimated or crossed over just a little bit all right and I do have it taped down so I'm gonna move this out I want to be able to take this off right here on camera because and you, when you're taking it off you really want to get it off in one go because if you pick it up and drop it back down I'm gonna bring it back to you once I get the paper off Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. That looks really good. Beautiful. 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 Yes. I don't know if the lighting is doing it any justice right now. I think it is. Yeah, okay. look at that, guys. That's sublimated great. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's okay. Good. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Oh, so that, that turned out really good. Again, that was 60 seconds on 400 degrees. And I think that she and her husband is going to love this. Yeah. Yes. And like I said, she's a client. She um, had me do some work for her for her wedding. Some other items. I made her a card box and I made cup koozies for her guests. We don't have that posted because that was pre uh Bless the press creations. We were in the works, but we weren't up and running at that time. So I didn't ascribe anything to the business that I did prior to us actually launching. But nevertheless, she just got married uh, a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And so now um, we'll be all um, adding this to the repertoire. There you have it, guys. I just wanted to shift the camera angle so you can get a good look at um, just how glossy and nice it is. You can clearly see that it pressed really nice into each piece. So it looks so good. Really, really good job, Mom. Okay. And I'm just going to turn the actual part. Now, remember I told you in the, the puzzle pieces stick together beautifully. You see them handling the puzzle and they're not coming apart. That, is, that attests to the quality of this particular brand of puzzles. I have watched some people um, do the sublimation on the puzzle. And when they put their puzzle down on the press, they had to press the pieces back together to make sure that they were um, joined together. This did not come apart. All, like Kimmy pointed out, all of the pieces are sublimated onto. And when she goes to take now, I'm going to this. This is how I'm going to present the puzzles when I have orders for them. I'm not going to break them apart. I'm going to actually keep it like this. On the back side, we will, um, 
I have chipboard so I can cut it out to this size, but I will mount a picture, the original picture, onto the back. So when you're looking at the front, you'll see the picture, I mean the puzzle, and then when you flip it over, you'll see the actual picture. And then we will um, deliver it back to the client in the packaging that it came in. So let me just put this back in the bag that it came out so you can have the full effect. And um, this is what I'm going to stick with. Now, if a client says that they want a little puzzle box, as I was talking to you about in the first video, that will just be that will be fine. It'll just be an extra charge on top of what we charge for the puzzles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just another example of how you can be resourceful when you're starting your business. Like my mom and I, this is we're very very new. We're just launching this business, so we don't have um, bless to press. Um, custom bags and boxes and all that stuff but like my mom did before when she literally made her own box in minutes for the puzzles she also became resourceful in a way to say you know I'm gonna just use the packaging it already came in um, to give it to my clients and you know you can take this you can take heed when you're you want to start your own sublimating or pressing business my mom literally puts t-shirts back in the plastic they came in and she will deliver it, fold it up nicely and deliver it just like that in the same packaging it came from. And you can do that in the beginning of your business until you can get your own packaging. So I think that's really neat. Now as it stands for the t-shirts, we do have, let me reach down there right under there. We do have um, individual packaging for the t-shirts that I purchased, mm -hmm. but some of the t-shirts that we bought they did come individually wrapped, so that gives us the opportunity to keep them in the original packaging is providing we don't break them. But I also bought this on Amazon for um, t-shirts, and they're 9 by 12 self-sealing self bags as well. And this gives me 200 bags, and I don't remember the price, but you don't, I mean, even if you have some other things you want to ship in this. I have this, so we have that ready in addition to some other things. But like I said um, in the video... I might not have said it. I might have said it in one of the edits because we done recorded this a couple of times. <laughs> but Uline is a great source of um, packaging supplies. So we'll talk about that in another video. We are just blessed to have gone through the whole process from start to finish with you to get this project up and going. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that this helps you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Like I said, we're learning Silhouette Studio. We're learning sublimation. We're learning how to do the videos. We're going to keep working on our quality and our content so that we can get you know to a really, really good um, standard. But for right now, this is what we got, and we did a great job. Yeah. Okay, so I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to get this video up and I hope that it has been a blessing to you. I hope that you have been able to use it or you will be able to use it to learn and to do something. There are other people out there doing way more extensive training and teaching, but we're going to try and do tutorial videos um, from the standpoint of where we are so yeah. that you're kind of, I, I've watched a lot of videos where I'm like, what? You're at step three. I don't even know step <laughs> one. How do I get the image into GIMP? How do I, you know, how do I even open up GIMP? How do I change my mat size? Right. So sometimes people start their tutorials and they don't think about the part like the very step one. Step mm -hmm. one is getting the software, download, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, um, and, and if there's anything that we left out and you want to know, please, by all means, leave it in the comments and we'll be more than happy to go back and re do a redo or do it over. We're going to be making more puzzles. So this is not by in any way, shape or form or fashion, the only puzzle that we'll do. Right. So if you need more information or if you need something to be more specific or laid out just make a comment down below and we will definitely incorporate that in the next video we do also for um any extra information because like my mom said before we are very very new to all of these softwares and all things like that like gimp inkscape um i will link down in the description of this video and any other video where we're doing a tutorial for extensive um back to the basics information i will list down jj free jjt free or I'll list him below. It's either JT Free or JJ Free, but he has playlists of, I think, GIMP he has tutorials, and then right now I'm taking notes um, on the Inkscape tutorial playlist that he has 21 videos starting from the basics of what colors to choose. <laughs> so he's really, really great. So I'll put him in the description of this video, and for whatever video that we're doing a tutorial on any software, I will try to find some really good um, videos going into way more detail if you need that because we are still starting 
from the beginning. All right. All right, guys. So thanks so much for joining us. Like we said, subscribe, comment, like. Help us get this channel going. Help us get the business going and growing. And we do appreciate your time and your support. Have a good night. Bye, guys.